Hello everybody, welcome to G4G Games for Gamers. Look what I've got today. Got this in the mail from eBay. Marvel Avenger, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. This should be uh, a pretty fun game. I've heard a lot about this game. Heard that it was pretty fun, so I went ahead and purchased it for my old uh, 360. Believe it or not, there is actually a mix of mutants and the MCU over here. So you have like Wolverine over here. And then everybody else is uh, MCU, but at least we've got one mutant over here. So I've heard this is a uh, phenomenal game. So I picked that up. And we're going to jump right into the wrap-up of PvP Season 24. The background music is brought to you by One Hour Creepy Circus and Carnival Music in honor of Halloween week. So, uh, I went out to the store at about 4.40, had the PvP screen up, and I was at about 17.90. Uh, I've apparently shown back up over here, and the rewards are automatically up, so we're just going to dive right into it over here. So, 100k silver. 10 gold. The Luna Sea. The rampant empowered ISO 8 for blasters cleared hot prevents effects that lock out ranged attacks. You cannot be impaired and you are immune to blinded and disoriented. Do I think this will make a splash in PvP? Not as much as the Bruiser one. Uh, I don't really think it's going to be that big of a deal. By the way, this is a uh, one of these mugs that you freeze and then the stuff in here gets icy. So that you don't have to put ice in here and keep your drinks cold. And it actually glows in the dark. Yeah, I know it's just Budweiser. It's really old, but it's kind of cool in the fact that it glows in the dark. Um, let's see. Can't really see it right now. Um... But yeah, I mean, I think it may be good for your personal agent to run against when you're running offense. If you ran a blaster agent to counter all the bruisers. But honestly, I mean, immune to blinded and disoriented. So basically, it only protects one person against the black as void. I mean, you could kind of do the satellite support for that. I, I don't really think this is that good of an ISO if it was like... You gain a stacking crit bonus if you attack every turn or something like that. Uh, maybe, but honestly nothing to write home about. And then, of course, the big whopper is the Infiltrator A-Bomb. Wow, that's a huge rock. A-Bomb recruited. <clears throat> hey, Agent, I hear you're vying for the Best Sidekick of the Year award. You know what? You can have it. You could be the one to follow the Hulk around and keep him from smashing up the city too much. Well, I get to bask in the limelight. I'm okay with this. So, I did finish exactly where I left off. And it was 1795. So, I was in the top one and a half percent. That Mr. Swag was a attack to counter the loss to Aeon Flux. And then I did another... And uh, had a nice win against the Storm Angel guy, which was a Quick Lord group that did kill my agent. But it wasn't enough to do it. So this is my last victory. Power Cell and the Void Generator for his mission team. That's interesting. On offense. Nice. It Yeah, kudos to this guy. But he's he <laughs> he's got the Infiltrator Power Suit on. So happily we got the Ada finish. I finished uh, where I wanted, which was between 1750 and 1800. So let's take a look at A bomb in action. I don't really need to show you the blaster ISO in action because why? If we're not doing PvP with it, it you're not really going to see the results of it. So since the daily is all heroes. Let's get a bomb in action over here. Sort of reminds me of there's a little bit of music like this in Final Fantasy VI. I think it was in that um, was it Zozo? Really, it God that town is the most annoying town. If you check my channel, there was a 
clip that I exported from today's stream. So, before we get into A Bomb, I just wanted to say if you were unaware, I went and streamed my five PvP matches in a day nearly every day of uh, the season. I went ahead and, well, we don't want Hyperion protecting, so let's get Moonstone back. Because we want to see what happens when A-Bomb gets hit. Um, let me kind of explain what I did this season. There has been some flack given to YouTubers of Marvel Avengers Alliance. And that flack is that sometimes the videos that get produced look too perfect. In the sense that the teams that we fight wind up like clearly in our favor and sometimes the bonuses look like shit and we do a move and the whole team gets destroyed and you're like, that doesn't look fair. So to kind of counter that, and that criticism hasn't really been levied upon me, but it's been levied upon some other MAA content producers here on YouTube. So I wanted to kind of dispel that a little bit and do my PvP matches live on Twitch. Um, sadly, Twitch does not actually have a category for Marvel Avengers Alliance. It only has it for Marvel Avengers Alliance Tactics, which is um, n obviously not the same game. And um, I just thought it would be interesting. I figured this was something that nobody was really doing. And it was a it was a risk for me. It was a risk in the sense that... Oh, that's... So his counter is to throw a rock that is the size of the entire screen. Um, it was a risk in the sense I didn't know if anybody would watch. And people did, which really made me feel good. I'm emotional with my PvP offenses, especially certain groups, especially with people who just simply use cookie cutter meta and don't use their brains. You could argue, well, the meta is the meta because it works. Yes, but who's to say that what you invent doesn't also work? And things like Pesty and Enchantress, the Quick Lords, um, you know, the pasty Red Hulks, it's just tiring, and it's old, and they're really annoying, and to constantly go up against them is is boring, and they, they get you a little emotional, so uh, before I get back on that, let's use Let's Rock, one enemy, pain train, and flanked, so he is already flanked because of the counter, so countering with a flanked ability is really nice, I like that. Pretty big character, but he actually looks a little short. So I'm using the Fantastic Formulary, which I happen to gain in today's daily, uh, which was on the stream. I'm going to use the Rectifier, which will increase Moonstone's damage. And now I'm using something called the Gamma Radiation Emitter, which says that everybody starts this Gamma Poison and en nearby energy attacks will go ahead and spread it so everybody has three stacks or two or three stacks over here but anytime energy attacks are used in the vicinity they will chain and increase people's stacks uh that is because i was doing that with uh carolina and moonstone so watch this what moonstone was changed and i didn't even notice until today but that's a different video so I think the Twitch streaming was a success. I did it basically every day except for one because my um, defense had done such a phenomenal job that day and Artanis was a new hero out in Heroes of the Storm. So I wanted to work on that. Let us switch Moonstone out and let us be cool to A-bomb. And give him his buddy. I'm sure this is going to be a phenomenal amount of team up bonuses over here. I don't know if he's capped on his level or not. Oh good, he's not capped. Okay, awesome. So, it was. A, I think it was a success. I'd like to definitely see more people watch it if I do it in the future. I don't know 
what my timing will be um, in the future of it. It just so happened that I was able to do a daily and, you know, weekdays and weekends. In the future, it might only be uh, weekends. So there's a protect. Nice. Protecting and applying pain train and flanked is, is pretty cool. So let us go ahead. We'll do that. We may as well stagger everybody. And I'll just rest. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of fun. And honestly, like I said, it is putting myself out in the open there. Because all of the... All of the rage of these teams and bad losses and everything like that are exposed. Also, the... Enjoyment of the winds are exposed too, so it is a double-edged sword, and it, um, I, I was happy to do it, and provided the timing works out in the future, I will try to continue to broadcast um, my PvP matches so that people can see that the YouTubers and everything, we don't always have to have the perfect circumstances, and... You know, it's it's a way of, like, having community outreach. We get to have people sit in the Twitch channels, make comments, um, maybe learn things from people like myself and others who produce content on YouTube for MAA and whatnot. So, it was, it was a lot of fun. I do consider it a success. And I think overall, the season was a complete success. Got a new Fitbit band over here. And this thing is stiff as hell. Now this one's not gonna fall off, that's for sure. Good. Oh, and we got a game refresh. Man, that's been happening a lot today. Um, Alright, so we'll just have to bounce out. Yeah, so while we're bouncing out, there is a, uh, I did export a clip from today's Twitch stream to YouTube. Uh, it was basically what was going to be an even match, started shading very heavily over towards a loss. And right at the very end, the, the tension of this match, or the drama, was so real, it was crazy. It comes down to Hafe and molly versus a red hulk and a pesty and i had been sufficiently debuffed because the enemy agent was running the legion pulse rifle so i had a lot of gamma going on on me a lot of radiation and it was coming down to the wire it looked like i was going to lose and then molly ate marshmallow ghosts and it really healed the team up and i was like okay this got turned around and it's now going to be my win I went to single target Pesty to kill him so I could clear my debuffs, but he had already put out um, in the mouth of madness. So Hafe jumped in and tanked it and took 10k damage. And I said, that's it, now we're back to losing it. Well, the enemy team gets stunned and Red Hulk goes for Hafe but can't finish him off. It's Molly's turn again and it, it's looking really, really bad. And then Molly eats Taffy. Heals the team up again, throws the van one time, and gets the win. It was really incredible. Uh, so the Whistling Steel is up for sale. This is a very nice item. You gain... Uh, these are unremovable debuffs. Uh, unremovable buffs, by the way. Chance for a follow-up. You have a chance to counter single target attacks. You gain Whistling Steel if you do it. You have a chance to counter attacks coming in. You gain Repartee. If you do that, what is really good is you will gain these bonus items if another piece of gear does the counter. So if you do a follow-up with something else like the rapier, you'll gain a whistling steel stack. If you counter somebody like the mandible or the grace note, you'll gain it to the hilt stack. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a pretty nice weapon. It can really buff up, um... 
counter and follow up teams. It's a very good item. I, I do say it's a purchase. 96 I think is expensive. It's not that good of an item to spend 96 on, but it is definitely a, a worthy item. I think it should be down at like 64. Uh, so let's take a look at these guys again over here. And I'm going to be doing another video right after this one. It'll be a video to discuss some possible future meta teams. What did I see this season? Well, a lot of Pestine Enchantresses. There is starting to be more and more counters to that with the Hex and Jaeger being out. Um, and some more Skeptics are out in the wild. We did see some use of the experiment to attack Stamina. And it had some reasonable success. Uh, Molly is particularly victimized by a team that has the experiment thrown on everybody. The experiment passively buffs the agent. And then if you never use it, the agent will drain people. However, if the agent does get to use it, then everybody on the team starts the, the drain. So that means throwing Molly's van is incredibly risky because it'll be drain 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 i think and it's, i'll be talking about this in the other video i think it is very possible to make a very passive drain team i did do a video in the middle of the season on a um basically attacking stamina actively and i don't think it's that effective because it sort of cripples the damage you do if you're just attacking stamina the whole time so, uh, we did see Thor and Beta Ray build teams this season. They are very scary when you see them drop in. They're intimidating. Um, the most intimidating, the Rookie of the Year award for this season. I mean, I'm going to give you guys about five seconds to think about it. But I think it's really, really clear. Rookie of the Year goes to Amazing Spider-Woman. How could it be anybody else other than this season? I mean, any other person this season. There is no other hero that made its introduction in PvP Season 24 that had quite the splash that ASW did. She was a huge blaster that put up numbers that honestly... I think should actually be nerfed. Uh, I, I think she's way too strong. And I mean, and I'm not one of these people who's like, well, yeah, I could use her myself. Yes, I absolutely could. But that doesn't change the fact that I think she is too strong. But what is really nice about her is that her strongest hit, the repelling uppercut, uh, you know, is going to have an issue with Hugin's Eye and is going to cause drain on the Elite ISO. That is the one saving grace. But what is really crazy about her and one of the biggest problems I have with ASW, be it the original or the alt, is the fact that the splash damage of the Blaster ISO that says uh, you have a chance to splash some damage to other people when you do attacks single target attacks often can do more damage than her initial hit if your team is fairly well protected like mine was with Haith oh we lost a bomb wow he bled out really badly but um if you let's say Molly tanks that repelling uppercut and she was made immune to a lot of stuff because of Haith that splash damage did a lot and it did almost more than the initial attack and i saw that with thor and beta ray bill there were times where beta ray bill's initial attack didn't really do a lot of damage but his chain lightning did 50 percent more to the whole team and i was actually up on um my twitch stream today i was like what the hell he did like 2,000 damage on the initial hit, and he had like 4,200 bouncing around my team. I was like, fucking nuts. So, 
Yeah, the rookie of the season definitely goes to ASW. We did... That's a very awkward pose, the two of them. Um, Black Knight kind of made a return to form there. He, he got the... I guess you could say the established rookie of the year. He all of a sudden showed up because he's bugged. Don't expect Black Knight to continue being able to do this. For 15 minutes at the beginning of the match. Just, eh, eh. I mean, he was immune to uh, the Scroll of Runamaroth. He was immune to the Fire Tornado. He just walked through those. ASW would be staggered and you would get a dodge on her. I don't understand that one. I, I totally do not get why she was staggered and dodging. But uh, yeah, ASW is clearly Rookie of the Year. The returning Rookie of the Year I would give to uh, Black Knight. Nobody else seemed to particularly make a splash this meta that was unusual. Um, we did see a lot of Age of Ultron Quicksilvers. They, to me, were bait. They were not that impressive because the Blaster one, if it AoE just made my, um, my agent go early who then put out the shield and... Okay, nice. So he killed that person because the flank was set up from the counter. Flanking counters is really nice. I do like that ability. Think about this. If a mom has the pre-firing infiltrator ISO, he's going to pre-fire a flanked attack on you. Nice. I mean, not as dangerous as the second returning Rookie of the Year award, Emma. Emma was everybody's like, oh shit, get the hell out of here moment of PvP Season 24. That pre-firing ISO made it so that she would pre-fire the psychic tap as the attack was coming in. And think about it, if she was 15, on her turn, she would activate combat reflexes by herself. So that any attack aimed her way that wasn't stealthy, psychic tap, psychic tap. And you're in the middle of doing it, so you're like this, you take the psychic tap, you complete, and you take huge damage. There was a point during the PvP where the first pre-firing psychic tap that Emma did hit me for 20k. I do not know where this came from. But all of a sudden, my agent just got womp, just chunked out of nowhere. He's, yeah, he's, he's a little tiny. It's so weird to see him next to Hulk and everything like that. He's, he's kind of a creepy character. And he also looks a little small, but then again, I don't really know that much about A-Bomb from the comics. So I don't know if inherently he is supposed to be small. Now I kind of wish I had done the flanked on Hulk. He does seem to have a little bit of an accuracy issue. He's, he's missed a lot, so... Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, his accuracy is complete shit. Protects as long as A-Bomb isn't camouflaged. Well, this move isn't giving him camouflaged. And there's that miss again. Yeah, we're going to really have to work up his accuracy when we start building him here. And I think we will go ahead and call it a video after this combat over here. And definitely stay tuned to the channel for the next video, which will be about discussions on potential future meta. So there's that protect, and that's going to be a bleed, unfortunately. But we'll fix that. Man, his accuracy is so shit! 
My god! Do that now. So this next round is going to be very interesting. It'll be... This could be the one where he dies. Funnily enough, he has about as much hit points as my agent in that infiltrator suit. Uh, we got a tactician on Mystique. Of course! God, you are so bad. You are literally blind. Alright, so there's uh, his protection. Didn't take a lot of damage. Can you hit her now? Now he hits her. He's actually not taking a lot of damage. That protection's rolling pretty well. And he's uh, flanked the enemy team over there. So now it's Hulk's turn, so we definitely are going to uh, put out that staggered. So let's get a wind up. Let's get a staggered. And now let's get some extra damage on Mystique here because of the flanked. I guess we ran out of Hulk ups. So he tanks again. And he dodges. Nice. And now she's flanked too. So a -bomb has single-handedly, single-target flanked the entire enemy team. And now he's just building on his own flanked over there. It's really fun. Hey, wow, he's he's doing a good job here, actually. He's he's done a lot. Alright, so we'll take this dude out. And Selene should have a lot of gamma radiation now because that Thunderstrike with the static should have caused it to go off. So, no, actually it didn't. She's only got two. So we did a breakthrough. Let's... How many Hulk Ups do we have? We have... Oh, only one Hulk Up. That's actually not a lot. Oh, it's because he's not taking any damage because A-Bomb's been tanking. But that's okay. We'll just abuse the the flanked over here. There we go. So these bonuses are actually a little bit smaller than I would have thought for these two. But look at the size difference between them. It also looks like Hulk is standing higher up. Like, it looks like A-Bomb is, is standing down here, and Hulk is standing up there. But yeah, just assemble and little buddy. That's a surprisingly low team-up for those two. Ah, oh, that's the Famine's Toll, the quick action... Excuse me, the quick action version of it. I'll probably wind up getting it. Oh no, I get an ISO. Oh, I get, hey, I get Quicksilver's Frictionless, which is actually not that impressive. But it's good to have. Scrappers, scrappers, bruisers. I wouldn't have minded a, a quick action Famine's Post. So let's take a look directly at A-Bomb on his character screen. Uh, and that will be it. And then stay tuned for the second video on potential future meta talks here. Come on. Alright, we know he's going to be on page 17. There he is, so... He's training. Okay, passives are carapace. A blade of carapace reduces damage taken per stack, loses the stacks as damage accumulates. Ghost Boxing protects as long as A-Bomb isn't camouflaged. He starts off with three stacks of the Ablative Carapace. 
We know what Let's Rock does. It does not remove Camouflage. It hits with Pain Train and then goes with Flanked. Chameleon Punch is what camouflages him. It's stealthy no matter what. It does rattle just like ASW. And that's what puts the camouflage on himself. Attacks gain guaranteed hit and crit. Attacks gain stealthy and exploit opportunity. That's nice. 50% chance to evade attacks. It's removed after the attack. So it's sort of like being phased. Ready to rumble, desperation attack, and it exploits shields and 20 mile crash. All enemies, catastrophic, they're off balance, they're cornered, and they are exhausted. So actually using 20 mile crash before a chameleon punch would be good. Because that activates the uh, exploit opportunity, and these are two and three opportunistic debuffs. So... That's the cast, every- well, that's not, not the cast. That's the video, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this wrap-up of PvP Season 24. And stay tuned for the next video. See ya.